Uh, hello, I'm, I'm Matthias Pinder Nielsen. I am the customer success manager here at uh, Cobalt International. I started here back in the fall of 2019 as an intern and is now a full time employee here. What we have done so far is we have increased our stability of our printer. And back when I started, it was kind of still prototyping. We are very confident now in our machinery. With that comes my job which is basically keeping the customers happy and satisfied with the, with the product, making sure that machines all around the world are up and running and functional so we can do more and more projects or the customers can do more and more projects and um, with that uh, comes, with their success comes our success. So their success is my success, that's kind of my motto uh, in, in my position basically. And I am one of many in the department called Project and Implementation. We are several architects, Elma and Zaid, and we're getting a new one as well. And otherwise we have a documentation department which takes care of certification, training modules, documentation, static calculations on the machine and stuff like that, making sure that our product and what we do is up to code and we can efficiently train and develop people once the machine is arriving at the customer site. Going out to the, with the machine to the customers, making sure that the machines are up and running properly, introduce our product, our software to the customer and with that comes software uh, training, uh, setting up training material, uh, training and last but not least an actual uh, test print uh, where the customer will learn how to print and the most uh, value we get from that is when the customers uh, and the people we train do the most themselves letting them kind of fail the first couple of times they will be more and more responsible and get to know more and more foremost we have the projects part in our department which contains projects such as uh, the G project which has been a huge success in my opinion, where I have been a part of both. The first one we did was uh, when I was still an intern, and that was uh, a steep learning curve. Uh, we had a lot of issues, we were facing a lot of issues, um, but we learned so much from that project. From that first project, it just rose, uh, in my opinion, and the, that's, that's where the company really grew. On this printer, we have X, Y, Z, E and the U axis. So, first of all, the X axis, the X movement is done here, which is this direction. So, this will be moving back and forth. That's the X direction. The Y direction is this whole boom moving back and forth in that direction. And last but not least, the Z is up on the columns up and down on the columns. So that's the Z direction. Furthermore, and we have the E axis as well, that's the extrusion axis. This extrusion axis is sitting down here. We have the tangential control, which is the U axis. So that's the movements we have on this machine. We can also extend these axes. So have either two print heads or a even uh, robotic arm or, or such because we can extend our axes with a modular system as this whole printer is a modular system. So this this particular machine is a 393. We are talking in modules of two and a half meters. One module is two and a half meters and on this one we have three. So the printable space in the X direction is about approximately seven meters, a bit more on that. And then the unlimited axis, so to speak, because we can just add extra uh, Z columns to support the, the Y is what we say infinite. But in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five axes of two and a half meters each, 12 meters approximately, 12 meters in, in printable area on this machine uh, in, in the length. And then in the height, we have at the moment two modules, so that extends to 10 meters, uh, but due to some limitations we can go about 
eight and a half. So that's the printable area we have on this machine. Again, we can go two extra modules on the X, which gives us 10 meters in the X, and we can go again infinite in the Y direction. And the maximum we can go in the height is four modules. So four modules is printable area with this machine in the height is approximately four and a half meters. Not nine and a half, but with the four modules in maximum height, we can reach 10 meters of the total height with the columns itself. As you can see on the setup here, it's quite modular. We are using uh, these uh, quite enormous uh, concrete blocks. These concrete blocks are made according to a drawing where we have done some static calculations on the machine. And these static calculations made into these uh, blocks of concrete for anchoring the machine and making it stable so we don't lose any precision. So this is approximately two feet in the height or 60 centimeters and then it is uh, one and a half meters in each direction. Um, so it's quite a heavy block of concrete. Um, this particular one weighs about two and a half tons. And if you want to go higher, you will have to make them even, even larger. But again, we have these drawings uh, available for our clients or customers, of course. And uh, we will be able to supervise and and help out with uh, the calculations in order for their project uh, to work. A part of our quality assurance procedures here at Coba International is that we are following these lists. We have created lists to ensure that our product is safe and well made and nothing is forgotten. So this is why we have uh, this, these quality assurance papers where we sign off on each and every box, each and every module and all the electronics. So nothing leaves the door without it has been quality assured and everything works, proper tested. After everything is checked, we do a commissioning of the printer which uh, consists of several tests. Uh, these tests are made to ensure that all axes drive as they should and printing uh, with this printer is going as smoothly as possible and that nothing has been uh, overseen or overlooked so when it reaches the customer they can be uh, very happy with their product and uh, make a lot of great projects and uh, make uh, sure that the uh, housing is uh, dealt with so we, we can get more housing in, in, in the world and uh, 3D printed houses in my opinion are gonna be awesome in the, those terms that you can make all sorts of curves who have all the design freedom that you want and uh, that's what we want to ensure when we do our commissioning uh, right now we are at the moment uh, in, in due process of commissioning so during the building of the printer, we have uh, checklists for all, all the boxes, both electrical and mechanically. We are uh, controlling and making sure, checking off all uh, the boxes, that everything is A-OK. -okay. And this is to ensure a high quality of our product. And with this in mind, we have uh, furthermore exchanged the previous electrical system, which allows us to add more tools and add more axes in, in, in that sense for the 3D printer. We are now able to expand our tools uh, on the printer so it can be more than just a printer in, in that sense. What I want to show you right now is what we do through commissioning. First of all, we need to make sure that all axes drive. Uh, we can either do the by this industrial PC that is inserted in the, in the main e-box as we call it. This user interface you'll actually you can actually set the minimum the maximum of the, the hopper level that is standing over there. So the hopper level you can actually adjust on the fly which can be adjusted for the specific material. So if you have 
a higher throughput and you want uh, your pump to pump every 20 seconds, you can actually adjust that pretty quickly by just scrolling uh, to the maximum of let's say 60 percent and the minimum when it needs to send the pump signal to the pump for it to, to do its action uh, you can send it here as well it's very interactive more interactive than we ever had before also you can s set the this is for a uh, solution that we have also created um, which is a mini batch plant where we actually mix real concrete and not water but a mix of real concrete and add additives into that and make it printable. With this you can uh, also uh, adjust some of the settings for the valve that is sitting on uh, that needs to be sitting on the hopper actually. Um, so this particular machine has not been sold with a uh, mini batch band as we provide as well. This is we have sold a um, mixing pump like an inline mixer where it is mixing uh, ready mix concrete um, or ready mix mortar uh, with water and then pumps it out directly and then it's printable. So with this we also have a movement uh, page on this uh, industrial PC here where we can see here all the power is off, very interactive, put the power on check all the emergency stops because as this is also safety certified also we have a operator module so we have the main e-box we want to power the uh, machine on we can either do it uh, through the, the button here or we also have a module uh, print operator module that you can roll out and be standing on a platform um, and having everything visual um, from that platform for example and operate the machine basically so this uh, has a key for startup this button green button for powering on the machine you have a blue button for uh, pumping and of course safety first a emergency button in case of any hazards so this is quite handy if you are like uh, you want a remote location for uh, the print operator. Otherwise, we have emergency stops located on all columns. Uh, mode where we are interacting here, where we can do the movement on the screen. So you can actually see if I press uh, Z in this direction. Of course, you need to and now all the. With this, the print operator is actually able to walk around. Um, again, this is browser-based, so you can do it with your phone or your tablet or something like that. You can control the machine. You can see if we want to move up. We have a Z plus five millimeters. You can hear the entire machine. And again, this machine knows where it is at all times. Put it up. Calibrate it the first time, you go from there. So this is uh, a little about uh, some of the things that we can, uh, how we control the, the whole printer. We can map out the whole surface. If there is any bumps or the surface is somewhat uneven and you want to print directly on the ground, for example, you can map out the entire bed in this sense. Again, this is a big desktop printer. In, in in, in that, those terms. So it's really easy to use. You can level the bed and then uh, uh, after uh, a meter or so it will be leveled out to the specifications of the machine. This is also why it's so important to level out the entire machine and do that uh, properly. Once you're done it the first time you're good to go, you're all set and you can take it from there. Um, with this in mind, we have uh, a lot of cool features that I also want to show you. I want to show you the entire machine, which uh, main components it is consisting of. We have the first, uh, we have the first Z, Z, Z box, right? So in here, we have a, again a 
a waterproof lid with with a seal in it. The seal is sitting up here. So in here there's uh, all the electronics and all the and the motor uh, sitting in here to control the, the Z box. And more or less all Z boxes are the same, all are the same. So as you look down the line, all contain the same uh, motor, driver, and uh, extra extra plugs and stuff like that. For this version 2.5, we added um, external plugs over here as well. If you go over here and look, external plugs over here. And this is because if a customer wants to buy one of our kits for this uh, machine, we can actually install cameras on the top of the Z columns. So if we can make like a set of cameras that is looking down on the printed area for uh, people to see at home or for live feed or just to get every angle for a project. Um, so this is already built in in all the boxes. It's not a uh, extra thing, it's already built in so adding the cameras is, uh, is an extra cost but everything is prepared. So we come prepared with the machine and we can come over and install the, the extra modules, that's, uh, that's real easy, that's a real easy. Again, all, all Z columns has a emergency uh, stop mounted on it and this is uh, due to safety so wherever you are you can press an emergency stop, make, uh, shut down the machine, make sure nothing is, uh, nobody's killed. With uh, this machine we have thought in uh, like squeezing points and stuff like that in order to get it, get it safety certified. We have no points on this machine where you can get squeezed and if you have uh, anywhere you can get squeezed within a hand's reach you have an emergency stop just to be safety certified. Furthermore the primary moving part which is the printing head at the moment as we see here, it is standing on our uh, specially made print stand so we can easily move it around and uh, mount it and dismount it. The concrete will be pouring in here on the side with a hose attachment for a 50 millimeter hose over here. We'll um, pour the concrete inside the hopper. Uh, as we have mentioned before, we can regulate the hopper level to optimize the pump to the maximum. We can actually see on the blinking uh, flashing LED whether we want to pump or not as it is flashing green and yellow. It is a uh, visual signal to the pump that it needs to pump. So if there is anything that goes wrong, you, you see on the lamp it does blink but you're not pumping a material You'll need to check your pump uh, if it's stalling or something else or stone is trapped in whatever. This is an indication actually to, to fill up the, the hopper level and we can easily demonstrate it by there is a sensor in here that is noticing when the hopper level is high and low, high and low. So very clear indication on very basic stuff when 3D uh, construction printing. Furthermore, uh, we have on this print head, we have a, a tube for the auger, which is pressing down the, the material for printing. And in the end of this tube, we have our tangential control. And the tangential control is a very unique feature, we believe because not everybody has a tangential control on their uh, 3D printer. And this ensures that we can print according to a pattern and uh, utilize what we call flaps. So we can put flaps on the outside and straighten out the uh, printed concrete and make it more smooth and get a nice, uh, nicer uh, surface quality. And even more, we are able to um, 
over extrude in under extruded layers so we have that ability as well so we don't have to manually do that part as well can you explain the tangential movement a little bit to people on non non-engineers absolutely absolutely the tangential control is by we have movement in x y and z so in this direction this direction and this direction and while printing uh, it will need to follow um, the pattern that is already made so if you have uh, curves and stuff like that this tangential control will move around and follow that pattern basically right this is a very unique feature that we are very happy about and we utilize it every time we print and really makes a really nice print in general with this in mind we have two cameras for the print operator and other viewers to watch the print with but more uh, importantly it's utilized by the print operator because if you're printing above let's say two meters and you are not able to to follow the print around as you would be on the ground you have these two cameras to aid you in, in, in terms of uh, ensuring the right extrusion basically so you can see if there is any design flaws in the in the drawing or if there is anything going wrong so this is a visual aid for the print operator then we have we're going to the printhead main e-box nothing special to see here but again this is all the drivers that we use uh, safety rated drivers to ensure that the safety on this machine is more than up to standard so it's uh we have made quite some improvements from our previous product uh, and we're really happy about our 2.5